And somehow, Ay. people are not bringing up the fact that these guys are a bunch of liars. Yeah, that bogus information, dragged our country into yeah. this illegal and unnecessary war. And now they're trying to do the yeah. same thing again. Hades. Tampa. It's just amazing that these people lied so much, dragged our nation and our military and uh, our forces into an unnecessary almost. war, in a series of unnecessary wars. Hades. Look at Iraq. All the things that they promised did not happen. Not only did they lie, but they failed in their plan. Post invasion in Iraq. I mean, so many problems in the Middle East and so many security issues around the world now can just go back to this horrific policy of invading Iraq and how they just screwed that up. Not only did they destroy the country, killing hundreds of thousands of people, civilians, and killing and causing the death of thousands of our own American soldiers unnecessarily. They destroyed that nation, which was ruled by a horrific dictator. But people will tell you today that Iraq back then is actually better than Iraq today. Iraq back then did not produce ISIS and have Al-Qaeda on its soil. These are the same people that when they went in and they said they were going to be celebrated by the Iraqis, celebrating their walk, you know, and welcoming them with open arms. That the war was going to pay itself with the Iraqi oil. Trillions of dollars later, look at the impact that that has had on our government and our economy. Some attribute the trillions of dollars in deficit and even the financial crisis itself partly due to these wars. But instead of these people being held accountable for the lies that they peddled, they're back in power ready to go to war again and oftentimes using and relying on Islamophobic tropes and lies and hatred against religious populations to stoke these wars. So to the highest levels of office, this is including President Trump that came in and said, you know, that they want to do a Muslim ban, shut down all Muslims coming into this country. Not only did he talk about it, but carried it out. Implementing the Muslim ban despite the protests, despite legislation, despite people, despite the courts, and every time coming back in the courts, even after the court shut it down, changing it two to three times until the Supreme Court, the included members that he put into office, decided to allow it. Which is the same person that said on national television that he believes Islam hates us. How does a religion hate a people? And not to mention, you know, and before, you know, for, you know, for some people that have been listening to the show for a long time, know that I was a founder of the, so the Muslim Civil Rights Organization here in the Tampa Bay area called the CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. They started a chapter here locally. And, you know, in monitoring the rise of Islamophobia and hate crimes in this area, you're talking about Sunday services at churches across the Tampa Bay area that invite these anti-Muslim preachers that come into the churches and spread lies and hatred against Muslims. Just straight up lies. So now, years after 9-11, you have a society and a culture where it includes institutionalized anti-Muslim racism. You have an entire generation that grew up just seeing that Muslims are the enemy because, you know what, these people are going to war in some majority countries. Well, it's not nice to bomb good people or nice people first in order to justify bombing them and killing them you have to demonize them people have to start thinking that somehow these populations deserve the bombing and we hear the same type of stuff with the drum beats to war so when we talk about Islamophobia we're talking about now a systematic campaign to continue with these wars there's a convergence between the Islamophobia or anti-Muslim movements and anti-Muslim racism there's a convergence there with American foreign policy that there are some elements within our government that see America's foreign policy in a way as policing the world, as having a footprint in so many places, many, much of it right now in Muslim majority countries. And this is not just in Republican administrations, it happened in Democratic administrations as well, including President Obama, who won the Nobel Peace Prize. Yet, and, you know, I voted for Obama, and I liked Obama. He was a good guy. But when it came to foreign policy and wars overseas, sure, he pulled back. But, however, 
under his administration, more Muslim countries were Muslim majority countries, or more, more countries in general. They just happened to be Muslim majority. Um, they had, you know, drone bombings, drone attacks, killing hundreds, if not thousands, of people. President Obama, under his leadership, bombed something like seven or eight Muslim majority countries. But way before 9 11, there was also the Iran hostage crisis. When in uh, 1979, there was a revolution in Iran and these religious students took over the government from the Shah of Iran who was basically running a puppet government for the United States. I mean, people were questioning why, why are the people in Iran, the people in this revolution hate America so much because of the history and the role that America had played as far back as the 1950s when the people of Iran freely elected their prime minister, Mossadegh, and the CIA directly overthrew and removed him from power and reinstalled a Shah, a dictator that oppressed the people of Iran for decades. Why did they hate the United States? Not because they hate the religion of the people of the United States, but they hated what the CIA that represented the United States did in their country, installing a dictator who was ruthless, who oppressed them, who tortured them, who remained in power for decades. So when they had a chance to overthrow him, they came back with a vengeance. And they blamed the United States for putting this evil person over them. They called it blowback. But of course, the neocons want to ignore that part. They want to ignore the role. Our intelligence units overseas and our foreign policy contributes to mayhem in those countries. The overthrow of governments, the assassinations of leaders, the undermining of their economies. Whatever you think of Maduro in Venezuela, and yeah, it's clear that he's a dictator, or he's authoritarian. But it's also clear that the United States is heavily entrenched and committed to regime change there and putting in all their forces to the point that they tried to support this coup that almost took place a couple of weeks ago and it failed, and now the plan is in trouble. Whenever you meddle in other people's governments, you know, people are not stupid. They react. And the people that reacted in Iran, it wasn't because of their faith, it wasn't because their religion said, go out and take American hostages and do horrible things and trade hostages for, and use them as a trading bargain. That was just because it's human nature. You bomb people, people want to bomb you. However, these neocons want to go on television and say, well, no, the Muslims are different. They're not like other humans. They hate us because we're free. This is the thing that they've been selling since 9-11. That somehow people in Muslim countries hate the United States. They envy the United States. They hate it because America is free. And they don't want America to be free. Come on. Muslims don't have freedom. The people, and including the criminals, well, you know, we can't get in the mind of terrorists. But some people have. Authors like Elon Pape and others that have analyzed why do terrorists commit terrorist crimes. And most of the time, not all the time, most of the time it has to do with political reasons. And a lot of it, most of it has to do with their country being invaded or occupied. It doesn't mean it justifies or there's any justification for the use of terrorism, especially against civilian populations. There's no justification. Within Islam itself, it says there's clear verses in the Quran that condemn killing innocent people. There's a verse in the Quran that, um, that basically says that to kill a single soul is equivalent to killing all humanity. So don't even try to kill a single soul. And to save a life, to save a soul, it says of saving all humanity. So Islam supports and promotes and advocates for supporting people, you know, life and condemns those that take matters in their own hands and kill people. And that's, again, that's, I mean, that's human nature. For some reason, these anti-Muslim uh, bigots want to say that, oh, no, Muslims are different. They're not like the rest of us. Uh, they prefer death. No. I know I'm going on a rant, but it just hurts me when I, when I see people like John Bolton uh, still in government. The people that have cost us so much. That created so much blowback. That we're still seeing, witnessing the results of their crimes. People like Wolfowitz and Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney, George W. Bush. Well, our country is still paying for their failed policies. Our country is still paying for their lies. And not only our country, but the rest of the world, especially in the Middle East, especially in Syria. With the rise of ISIS, especially in Iraq and Afghanistan, Somalia, Yemen. It's like a Pandora's box with this Iraq war and the ripple effects it had on the entire region. When we create a, a, a power vacuum like that, when, when Paul Bremer, who was in charge of Iraq, George W. Bush, handed Iraq, effectively making Paul Bremer, white guy from the United States as a president of Iraq, as an interim president, after evading that country, Handing over power to Paul Bremer. Paul Bremer dismissed the entire Iraqi army and police force and told everybody to go home. Probably the worst decision ever. And saying anyone who had a role to play in the regime of Saddam Hussein, the back party, will not have a role, a future, a role in the future of Iraq. Well, these are all the experts. Those are the people that, those are the people that ran the country. Those are the bureaucrats. So you're talking about entire government dismissing it, including its police force and military. So who, who are you going to put there to run the place? There was immediate chaos. There was no police, there was no military, there was nothing. So oh, we're going to start training a whole new police force, an entire new military. That takes generations. 
In the meantime, these people went home with their weapons, formed militias, and started fighting the American soldiers and creating chaos and fighting within their own country. Militias started fighting each other, became sectarian, and there were people that were spoken from the outside. With this power vacuum in place, groups like Al-Qaeda in the Iraqi merged, which eventually became ISIS. Where did ISIS come from? Iraq. Al-Qaeda in Iraq, they renamed themselves into ISIS. You can thank George W. Bush and Paul Bremer for that. But these people, instead of taking ownership and being accountable, and the Congress holding them accountable for helping contribute to the rise of ISIS and the creation of ISIS, that's not to say that George Bush himself formed the group or Paul Bremer didn't know. They created the environment where groups that never had any power in that country, that they were able to rise up under that environment when you have lawlessness. They were able to recruit, and they had people that had a grudge, and they were able to partner with former Iraqi soldiers that knew the country had the weapons and knew warfare. How did ISIS soldiers and leaders know combat so well? It's because they're former military that were dismissed by Paul Bremer. They joined with forces with, with the extremists who happened to have, they called them religious extremists, and they became a deadly force. They were using the cover of religious rhetoric to gain credibility, but make no mistake, this was, these are militant militias that had political agendas, it wasn't religious. Of course, through their rhetoric, especially their social media use, they were able to recruit people from across the world that bought into their fake religious rhetoric. They bought into it. Once they got there, they realized that this is just a bunch of former Iraqi Baptist leaders They have adopted religious rhetoric and they have a political agenda, not religious. We can go to the phone lines at 813 I say all of these things, and as I'm sitting here, I'm watching on television, there are images in the newsroom here of Chelsea Manning, who's been released from uh, jail. She's subpoenaed to testify next week. Because of Chelsea Manning, we know about the atrocities that were committed by our American soldiers in Iraq. Abu Ghraib, you remember Abu Ghraib? The horrific images that came out of there, the evil systematic campaign to treat these uh, captives. If people were radicalized and became evil, it was in places like Abu Ghraib. Would you treat a person like an animal, like a dog, and you smear them in feces, and you rape them in front of other inmates, and you take images of them to humiliate them, and you shot them with uh, elect electric wires, and you sleep deprivation, and you keep them naked all the time and treat them like animals, guess what happens? They become animals. When most people get out, you think they're going to love the United States? You think that they're going to love what the United States soldiers did to them while they're in captivity? And if they react in evil ways, the same ways that they were treated while they're in prison, it had nothing to do with their religion. In fact, the people that did not react in evil ways, it was because of their religion that they were able to discipline and contain themselves not to react violently. We have to remember what happened in Iraq so we don't allow the same thing to happen in Iran. And I don't have any love for the Iran regime. I've seen that what their role was in Syria. I see what their role is in different parts of the Middle East. But our country going to war with Iran will be like Iraq 10 times. The mayhem that it will create in the region. Who ends up paying the ultimate price? It's the people. The people of Iraq. The people of Iran. If we go to war there. If our country goes to war there. The people in Afghanistan. It's individuals, the families. Not the people in Syria. Of course, we're bombing these countries over there. The war is not happening here in our so soil. But a serious question, when you bomb people there and kill people there, do you think that makes us more safe or less safe here at home? When you launch drone attacks by drone operators that are operating here in the United States, like a video game, bombing and killing people thousands of miles away, do you think that the children of those people that were killed are going to grow up to just ignore what happened? Are these policies making us more safe or less safe? Well, if you just look at the statistics, we have more terrorists today around the world than ever before. Our phone number is 813-239-9663, and our email is djwmf.org. You can email us. Now Mark sends an email saying, good morning, hey, I wanted to say thank you to both of you for hosting this program. You've taught me so many things and opened my eyes to realities that we have never been exposed to anywhere else. Hope, both of, uh, hope you both are, are on the air for as long as it's good for you because you're doing such a good, so, so much good for all of us. Thank you, Mark, from Brandon. Yes, we'll enjoy it. You know, I don't know what it is, but you know, maybe it's because I'm fasting. I can't eat. It's Ramadan for us. Um, this is the fifth day. There was another 25 days. We're fasting. Starting about an hour, we stopped eating. Uh, you, you know, just can't eat after 5.35 a.m.
to go start at 4 a.m. And then till sunset, which is about 8.05 or 8.08. Or now, I know by the minute because when you can't eat until sunset, you know when sunset is. You can't eat or drink. And people often ask, not even water, yeah, not even water. So, fasting from food, water, from everything, you can't consume anything. And it elevates you in certain ways. Um, and I guess you have a different perspective and different type of energy. It's kind of hard the first couple of days to adjust to the schedule. And of course, I'm coffee in the morning. Um, but you get used to it, and it just becomes ordinary. Our phone number is 813-239-9663, and our email is djwmf.org. Um, somebody uh, sent them to Muhammad. It. it wasn't religious, it was financial. It wasn't because of religion, it was because of money. That's what he's saying. Charles um, sent in a, a quote, which I'll read um, a bit later. I'm going to go to our phone line, so we've had some people that have been waiting for a while. Thanks for waiting. Um, Mick, go ahead, and um, you can call us 813-239-9663, and our email is djwmf.org. We're going to go to Hadish, Hadish in Tampa. You're on True Talk. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Yes. You said a lot in trying to unpack this. Um, it's really like the last uh, uh, the text says that about money. It's a war of cultures. I don't think anyone would consider someone that shoots up innocent people a Christian any more than they would consider the rat child Jew. Um, Groups like the Taliban don't fit in uh, with the world. This character, Bradley Manning, is manufactured. And you mentioned the pedophile. His, his job, his role, this role of the exercise is purely psychological to promote that judicial industrial complex. I guess the problem that I'm having this morning is with the language that's being used uh, to identify uh, yourself as a member of something you speak against when you use the words we and our to refer to the United States. Yeah, what's the problem with that? I mean, people can disagree with... Well... I mean, when I say our, like, I'm disagreeing with the policies of John Bolton. His idea of what he wants to do with the United States is different than mine. I have the freedom of speech to speak out against that. But yeah. see, what he's doing with the United States is more effective. What do you mean? The average person like yourself and I uh, is using it as a tool, a vehicle to enrich themselves. And... This is not what this uh, land was made for. So uh, I denounced the United States uh, and... Uh, but are you a U.S. citizen? I'm against the United States. I am, I am just not going to support the United States. But are you a U.S. citizen? Are you living in this country? I was born in the United States, but I didn't sign up for it. But you pay taxes, yeah? I mean, are you paying taxes? In grade school, because mm. I must have known better. It wasn't how I was raised. But when you look around and see, sometimes you have to choose which way to go. So you're just staying neutral? <laughs> 